Hello, Internet. Welcome back to my series of videos on real analysis. Uh, just to recap, last time we were investigating problems with the rational number system, Q, and we motivated our suspicion of Q with a geometric example. We had the unit square, we looked at its diagonal, and found that it couldn't be rational because it satisfied this equation. That in itself makes Q suspicious. It's not even sufficient for doing basic Euclidean geometry. Uh, let's look at this problem in a little bit more depth. I'm going to define a function thusly and I will graph it. It's simply a parabola shifted downward by two units. So it'll look something a bit like that. Now as a thought experiment, if you can call it that, let's pretend that we've swapped out the x-axis, which is normally thought of as like a copy of the real number line, with a copy of the rational number line. And let's investigate the site of this crossing here. Let's zoom in on it and see what we think is going on here. This is all intuitive and informal, so don't worry too much about that. Here's the graph of f of x, and here's our mutated q x-axis. And we ask, what happens when it passes through the x-axis? It should be fairly clear that it's not going to actually touch the axis. Because if it did, let's say it touched here, at some point a0, if that's on the graph of f of x, then 0 would equal a squared minus 2, just plugging into this definition of f of x. And so a squared would equal 2. And hence we would not be in the rational numbers. So there is no intersection here. So somehow f of x manages to just slip through the x-axis without touching anything. It's almost as if there were a little gap. As if the rational numbers were not the solid line we once thought, but were in fact a very finely perforated line that sufficiently sneaky graphs like x squared minus 2 can pass through. Um, and this brings us to the, the point of this video. We're going to be investigating the nature these gaps, motivating these gaps in Q, and deciding that they are really the fundamental problem with Q. For instance, the gaps are the reason that we can't solve this equation, that this graph doesn't actually cross the x-axis. I mean, can you imagine the havoc that this would play? Uh, you remember the intermediate value theorem that's one case of it was that if you knew that it had a negative value at A, or I already used A, let's use B, and a positive value at C, that it would hit zero somewhere in between. But in this case, it doesn't. That's highly non-intuitive for a setting in which we would like to do calculus. Um, another example is in the convergence of sequences. Consider the following sequence of rational numbers. It should be pretty obvious what the pattern is. And it's so on, so on. Uh, spoiler alert, it converges to pi. Or at least it would. But we've confined ourselves to the world of Q then 
what happens because we know from our experience, maybe we'll prove it in these videos, that pi is irrational. So these numbers are getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to something, but that something isn't in the set. So we really, in all honesty, can't say that it converges. And Q, this doesn't converge. We haven't formally defined the convergence of a sequence yet, but you can you should still have some intuitive problems with Q at this point. We have a sequence of numbers that we know should theoretically get close to something. You know, if we graphed the sequence kind of in versus x of n plot you would get something that eventually just kind of levels out some number. It's really, really, really close to it. But this number, you know, if this is Q again, let me zoom in here, we get another gap. If that's that number, here's our X and axis, we've got a gap. So this limit doesn't exist. The non-existence of limits that we know should exist, the failure of very familiar assertions like the intermediate value theorem, and the inability to do basic Euclidean geometry should have made you fairly suspicious of our ability to work with Q. I think we should all feel pretty good about saying no to Q. It's just not good enough for what we want to do, especially in analysis. But what are these gaps? We said there are gaps. But we know that if we have two numbers in Q, and that if one is strictly smaller than the other, then we can find a number in between them. Their arithmetic mean is going to be between them, and it's a rational number. It's also in Q. So it doesn't have a gap in the same sense that the integers have a gap. If you subdivide down small enough in the integers, you'll find some kind of void. But not so with Q. So these gaps, as harmful as they are to Q's usability in mathematics, are evading description for the moment. So in the next few videos, we're going to try to build up the mathematical terminology to describe these gaps and then define the real numbers as the number system that fills in these gaps.